Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillah. la ilaha siwa al-wahid al-ahad al-fard al-samad al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والآفات وتزكينا بها من جميع الأهواء والشهوات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وترفعنا بها أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله كيف حالكم؟ الحمد لله The chapter that we're looking at today is the etiquettes of companionship and fraternity and brotherhood and the etiquettes of interacting with people. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimullah, divides the chapter into a number of sections. First, he looks at the, the virtues of fraternal relations and brotherhood. And then he looks at uh, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving one another for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and disliking as well for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he looks at how one should deal and interact with people of varying levels of disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he looks at the conditions of taking a companion and taking a, a bosom friend. And then lastly, he looks at uh, the rights that are due upon us vis-a-vis others and in that he looks at Muslims the rights that we have to discharge relative to other believers uh, the rights of our neighbors uh, the rights of relatives and children so unfortunately uh, due to time and our focus um, we're not going to spend time looking at the particularities of the rights for others because that is a very extensive but very beautiful and thorough discussion that the Imam undertakes. What I would like to do is focus on uh, let's say first principles uh, looking at the idea of khuluq and its connection in our spiritual in my spiritual quest to Allah Azza wa Jal. Barakallahu feek. So firstly, what is khuluq? Because essentially the chapter is all about khuluq at various levels. The importance of khuluq, uh, khuluq with, you know, what khuluq do I look for in a friend? Uh, how do I deal with other people in society? Different aspects uh, of people, my neighbors, Muslims in general, my relatives. And what underlies that, all of it, is the general theme of khuluq. Or it's often translated as character. So what is khuluq? Well, khuluq in Arabic, if you like, one way to look at it is, uh, we see that in contradistinction to khalq. So khalq is my external form. My external form is my khalq. The way I look like on the outside. And khuluq, by changing the harakat, khalq to khuluq, khuluq, if you like, is what I look like on the inside. So my external image is my khalq, and my internal image is my khuluq. So if, in some way, we were able to capture what I am on the inside, internally, and therefore, truly, because what I look like on the outside is incidental. 
created by Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, for most of what I am on the outside, I have no control over. But what I look like on the inside is my reality. So what is my reality? Uh, my image on the inside. So that is, in one way, my khuluq. My khuluq, my character, and different aspects of my character, my akhlaq, are all fruits of what I am like with my qalb or my heart. So depending on the state of my qalb and my heart, depending on its health, depending on its salama, depending on its beauty, depending on its virtue, the fruits of that are my character. Are you with me? The fruits. So when I look at character, character has an origin. The origin of character is really the states of my qalb, of my heart. And the relationship between them is a necessary one. By that I mean, if I have a beautiful heart, if I have a qalb that is salim, what will my character be like? Also salim. I'll have beautiful character. And if my character is low and base, then what does that say about my heart? My heart is unhealthy. My heart is not in a good state, not a beautiful state. My heart too is, is low and I'm suffering from various diseases of the heart. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in that famous ayah that most Muslims know, Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah Ta'ala speaks about the khuluq of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and praises it. And Allah Ta'ala says, certainly you are on an exalted, tremendous khuluq. And the ayah is very beautiful linguistically because of all of the emphatic grammatical elements. Uh, وَإِنَّ that's a, that's a grammatical uh, element of emphasis. وَإِنَّكَ You are certainly la Another emphasis, uh, you know, uh, another instrument of emphasis in grammar. وَإِنَّكَ la عَلَى Another instrument of emphasis. خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Certainly, undoubtedly, you are over a great khuluq, a tremendous khuluq. And the ala here is isti'la, right? Uh, you are, it's like Allah Ta'ala is saying to Rasulullah Sallallahu you are the possessor, you own all beautiful character. Do you know what I mean? Meaning that if anyone can be said to own all of beautiful khuluq, because khuluq here is general, so it includes every beautiful characteristic of akhlaq. Whatever I can think of a beautiful character is included in that. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he owns all of that. He owns it all. He's the master of it. Right? As though he almost gives it out as he chooses and dispenses of it as he wants because the ayah indicates that he's the owner of all of that. Some, some ulama have described the ayah as like he's sitting on the throne of good character because ala has to do with the idea of being over something, right? As though he's, he's sitting, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon the throne of beautiful khuluq. And that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his, his being and his character. In another text, uh, in a hadith, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innama bu'ithtu. I was only sent to fulfill, uh, to perfect the most beautiful standards of khuluq. And this is actually a very powerful statement because innama, in Arabic, yufidu al-hasr, it indicates towards restricted, restrictedness and exclusivity. It's like he's saying out of emphasis, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the only reason why I was sent 
as a messenger with all that I have and all that I gave is what? One reason only. What is that? Husnul khuluq. Beautiful khuluq. The reason. And actually, one could say that that is not simply uh, a hyperbolic emphasis on the importance of khuluq, but that it is true literally. Because everything in deen, everything in deen, at every level of deen, of law, of faith, of creed, uh, of spirituality, all of that is actually intended to produce good khuluq. All of that is intended to produce beautiful khuluq. And many other beautiful texts of his, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقَلُوا فِي مِزَانِ الْمُؤْمِنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ, مِنْ خُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ There's nothing weightier. Please forgive me, I have a bit of a cold. Uh, so I, I can't keep, uh, if I keep doing that, we're going to miss the time. Uh, there's nothing weightier on the scale of the believer on the day of judgment than beautiful khuluq. Nothing weight here on the scale of Mizan on the Day of Judgment and beautiful Khuluk. And this text, which is very profound, he says that uh, min ahabbikum ilayya, the most beloved to me, the most beloved to me of you. Wa akrabikum min, minni and the nearest of you to me uh, in companionship on the day of judgment. Ahasinukum akhlaqa, the most beautiful of character. The most beloved of you to me, the one I love the most. And the closest to me on the day of judgment are the ones of you with the most beautiful character. And min abhadikum min abhadikum ilayya. And the worst of you, and the most despised of you, wa abadikum minni, and, and the most distant from me of you on the day of judgment. Masawikum akhlaqa are those of you with the, the lowest and the most despicable character. Now, what can we say? I mean, if we want to be close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we must be heirs of his legacy. And he's saying here, sallallahu alayhi wa that my legacy, what I what I am in essence and what I leave for you and what you must what you must realize is what? Beautiful khuluq. The essence of his legacy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is beautiful khuluq. The essence of the legacy of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the essence of the legacy of our deen is beautiful khuluq to the extent and this is a text that I found actually uh, today. I, it was in the back of my mind. One of, the, one of the ulama of our deen, a great scholar and also a great master of the heart himself. He says, Adinu kulluhu khuluqun. Summarizing the text from the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Adinu kulluhu khuluqun. All of deen is khuluq. فَمَنْ زَادَ عَلَيْكَ فِي الْخُلُقْ زَادَ عَلَيْكَ فِي الدِّينِ And whoever is better than you in khuluq is better than you in deen. وَكَذَلِكَ التصوف. And like that in spirituality. Because he says, التصوف, Islamic spirituality, هو الخلق. All of that is khuluq as well. فَمَنْ زَادَ عَلَيْكَ الْخُلُقْ فَقَدْ زَادَ عَلَيْكَ فِي التَّصَوُّفِ And whoever is better than you in khuluq is better than you in Islamic spirituality. Because Islamic spirituality is part of deen. And if all, to, if all of deen is khuluq, then all of spirituality is khuluq. Right? And if all of deen is khuluq and one is better, the one who is better in khuluq is best in deen, then the one who is best in khuluq is, best, is better than one who... Uh, the one who's better in khuluq is better in their spirituality. Regardless of our claims, I'm a spiritual person. You know, I practice spirituality. Or 
you know, I have these teachers in spirituality, or I follow this path in spirituality. All of those are claims. All of those are claims. The truth to the claim is your khuluq. The truth to my claim is my khuluq. And no matter what I say, no matter what I claim, indeed, no matter how many years I study, no matter how many years of scholarship I study, no matter how many years of, of, of active ibadah, if someone else is better than me in khuluq, they're better than me in deen, and they're better than me in spirituality. And that's the essence, the essence of, of the chapter. Um, and that's the essence, I think, of what he wants to say. Because then, then uh, with beautiful khuluq, from this point, we can understand the various etiquettes of dealing with, with people in society. Right? Because khuluq is, khuluq is the origin and in the essence. How does khuluq connect directly with spirituality? In this way, the essence of Islamic spirituality is the realization of ihsan. The essence of being a Muslim, actually, is to realize the path of ihsan. Iman and Islam must lead to ihsan as a Muslim, because that is the most beautiful expression of surrender to Allah Azza wa Jal. That is that I worship Allah as though I, I see Him, meaning I feel His presence more real than anything else. Right? To worship Allah as though you see Him. And that is Ihsan. And Ihsan means beauty. It means excellence. It means virtue. Because when I, when I achieve a level of Ihsan, and Ihsan is infinite levels, then I become beautiful. Are you with me? Because when I'm near to Allah, when I'm near to Allah, and when I worship Him as though I see Him, when I'm near to the ultimate source of beauty, then I must become beautiful too. Right? If I'm near to Allah Ta'ala, who is as salam then I must be in peace and give peace. If I'm near to Allah Azza wa Jal, who is a sabur then I must be patient and give patience. If I'm near to Allah Ta'ala, who is Al-Alim, then I must, I, I must learn myself and give knowledge. So the closer we are to Allah Azza wa Jal, the more we are, uh, the more we are adorned. Uh, and dressed with the beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that would be ihsan at different levels and when I am in ihsan spiritually then I'm able to give ihsan to others and that's the essence of khuluq are you with me? so then I can be good to others meaning that I have beautiful khuluq and the uh, you know the examples of beautiful khuluq are so numerous. So help me name some of them. Haya, modesty, right? Which is actually the most important khuluq of our deen. Inna li kulli deen khuluq, right? Wa khuluq wa hadha deen al haya. It is the essence of our deen, having a haya. Not only in how we dress and attire, but in how we speak, in how we conduct ourselves with others, how sensitive we are to offending others, right? how we are with teachers, how we are with our parents. All of that, all of that is and should be driven by the khuluq of haya. What else? Let's do at least eight. Respect. Uh, yes, let's say ihtiram, respect. Um, yes, alhamdulillah, let's, let's, yes, respect. Shukr, gratitude, being grateful for, for Allah Ta'ala's favors and showing gratefulness to others, to those who do good to us, and being grateful for small things and not, not being ungrateful or not being unmindful of the small niceties that people do, that people do for us every day, every moment. 
What else? Three. Sabr, patience, yes. That is, I'm near to Allah as sabur and therefore I am patient, and I'm patient with others. I don't anger quickly. Right? My temper doesn't rise quickly. I don't speak words that are inappropriate. Words of anger, words of hurt. When I'm tested with difficult circumstances or tested by others. But I, I quell that inside of me. I quell the bitterness inside of me with sabr or the fire of expression and response with sabr right what else that's four In, indeed being truthful sidq I never lie never ever in joke or otherwise I don't lie and of course the deen allows an exception here or there, but I think we should not focus on exceptions. We should focus on the rule, which is never lie. And amana, our sister said, that is truthfulness. When I promise, I fulfill. When I promise, I fulfill. If I go to work, it's at a certain time. I go in at a certain time, I leave at a certain time. When I'm at work, that's what I do. I do work. I don't do other things. When someone gives me a trust, I fulfill that trust. I'm not treacherous. I'm not deceiving. Amana. What else? Mahabba, love. Right? Mahabba. I love for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? And I, I act in a way with others uh, to create love between us. The exchanging of gifts, the exchanging of salam, visiting people, right? Visiting people, being concerned about people, visiting the sick, accepting the invitation of others when they invite me, and there is no good reason to say no. Mahabba. What else? Tawakkul. I, I rely on Allah Azza wa Jal. I don't rely on the means. I don't rely on myself. I don't rely on other avenues, but I, I, free my, I free my actions and my mind and my heart by relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't seek to own, I don't seek to own the hearts and estimation and praise of others because I'm connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore I deal justly and fairly and beautifully. Tawadu, humbleness. I'm not proud, I'm not arrogant. I'm not vainglorious. Uh, in my dealing with everyone, I see them better in some way. If someone is older, they're better. They've lived longer than me and they've done more good deeds. If someone is younger, they're purer than me. They've lived shorter, but they haven't done what I've done. If I see someone who is more learned, if I see someone who is less learned, I always look at myself as lesser. Never as better, never as greater. Tawadu, qana'a. I'm satisfied with what Allah gives me. I'm satisfied with, with little. And therefore I live a life of happiness and contentment because I'm never thirsty for more. Ithar, I prefer others to myself. I want for others what I want for myself. Uh, I, I never behave with others in a way that I wouldn't you know, in a way that I wouldn't want them to behave towards me. And even better than that, I prefer others to myself. So all of these are the most beautiful fruits of Tawheed. And I remind myself in you, you know, from what we've learned, this is the essence of deen. This is the essence of our pride and our legacy. Islamic civilization is a civilization of khuluq. It is not a civilization of power. Power, if it is not used, if it is not attained and used, if it is not attained and retained and maintained with khuluq, what is it? Nothing. So even with respect to power of various forms, political and otherwise, the matter returns to the beauty of the khuluq. 
It is not about, in essence, scientific achievement. That is not the essence of our civilization. Because science, the pursuit of science, and the use of science, without khuluq, what is that? You know, the science of producing a nuclear bomb and then using it on others. I mean, how can that be said to be civilized now, in any sense of the word? Though the beauty of our civilization is a beauty of akhlaq. That is what we should be proud of, our akhlaq. This akhlaq, which is a, which is a direct result of the, the fruits of tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the essence of our deen, and the essence of our closeness with the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. That's what we strive for. That's what defines us as Muslims, akhlaq. And to the extent that I, you know, as an individual, don't have that, and don't have these beautiful akhlaq, I'm deficient in deen. I'm wanting in deen. I'm not that Muslim. I'm a Muslim. I'm not that Muslim. The Muslim that Allah wants, the Muslim that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves. I'm not that Muslim. And I shouldn't be proud of my Islam. And to the extent that our institutions, because institutions, masajid, centers, places of da'wah, places of learning, places of social work, to the extent that the institutions are the result of the akhlaq of all of us, of the members, right? Because that's what, that's really institutional culture. It's institutional culture is the collective culture of the hearts of each one of the members. That's it. You know, 20 hearts. The collective spiritual akhlaq that determines the culture of the institution. Right? I mean, it doesn't matter what's, what's said, you know, uh, in the rules and the, and the directives. Uh, you know, the reality of that culture is the reality of the individual akhlaq that we all have put together. That culture, you know, the, the value of our institutions and the benefit and the actualization of deen in those institutions is only a result of the akhlaq. Is ultimately a result of the akhlaq of the institution. And I heard from one of our brothers, you know, and there are many stories of this, that our, our institutions, they sit on, you know, Treasure, treasure chests of zakah money. Treasure chests of zakah money that are not dispensed. And how many stories, especially of late, where individuals in need, in need, seek zakah money, in genuine need, and find it difficult because of the bureaucratic process, or so we understand it, the bureaucratic process, find it difficult to, to acquire their right, which is zakah. It's their right, which is zakah. Those institutions are holding the rights of others who are entitled to zakah. Now, that, you know, to the extent that we have this malaise, and I believe we do, that is a terrible, that is a terrible, what's the word? That's a terrible indictment, indictment. A, that's a terrible criminal indictment of our lack of akhlaq. That's a terrible indictment on our lack of akhlaq, no matter what we call ourselves. Muslim institutions, da'wah institutions, you know, ilmi institutions. If we don't have akhlaq, what are we? What are we? If we don't have akhlaq, we are uncivilized. And that is an indictment of our lack of, of generosity, our lack of fairness, our lack of ithar, of concern with others. That's a result of our miserliness, our bukhul, our lack of concern, our lack of haya and sensitivity to the rights of others, our lack of adl, our zulm, our injustice for the rights of others. 
no matter what we call ourselves, no matter what the nomenclature is, right? the true essence of me is my inner image. And my inner image is my khuluq. And I can only be that Muslim, that Muslim, when I perfect and beautify my khuluq, which was the reason why he came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it will be the reason of my closeness to him, or my distance from him, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. May Allah make us of those whose practical primary concern in the learning of their deen, in the actualization and practice of deen, is the beautification of their khuluq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the Global Islamic Seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.